Welcome back to our study of Pilgrim's Progress. We got a chance to read chapter 9, or at least if you've read that so far, that's what this video is about. You might recognize the main location in chapter 9 because there's still a quite prominent magazine in American culture that bears the name of the place that Christian and faithful are going to be going through, and that's Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair is meant to represent basically all of the sin and temptation of the world and also the response of the world to those who have been changed by the power of the gospel. Uh, remember that Bunyan's context has a lot to do with how this chapter looks, but it's not so unique to John Bunyan and to his time that it doesn't have a whole lot to say for us. John Bunyan still lived in a time where people who claimed to be Christians could be martyred for their faith if their brand of Christianity didn't look enough like what the state uh, was saying that it should. For Bunyan and for many Protestants in places even like England, uh, this was a time where Bunyan obviously was in prison and uh, there would have been cases where even there, there it would not be unheard of uh, to see people who were put to death uh, because of their faith. Around the time of Bunyan you were also having the war between Protestantism uh, and Catholicism or the Church of England uh, and then uh, back and forth you, you have uh, people like historical people like Bloody Mary and others that when the Catholics would take over there would be a lot of Protestants who were killed. At times when the Protestants would take over there would be Catholics who were put to death. And so it was a very violent time even with faith. And so Bunyan writes in the midst of that circumstance. So some of the things in, in the sense of the harshness that we see uh, comes out in this. Now we recognize at the same time that we live in a world where very many people are still being put to death for Christian faith. Uh, for the most part that's not in the Western world, that's in places like Africa and Asia, the Middle East uh, and otherwise, uh, but we still live in a day where there are very many Christians, though in the United States that's not the case yet, uh, that there are very many Christians elsewhere who face similar circumstances, that having uh, just simply a Christian faith that's not necessarily dogmatic and, and not necessarily looking for a fight can be something that leads to a great amount of trial. Even for many of us who are Americans, we see the truth that comes through in, in Bunyan's chapter. And there's several things I just want to mention quickly, uh, as hopefully you've got a chance to read this chapter. Number one is you see that faithful and Christian are encouraged by evangelists, that as they talk to him, he's the one who has the role in their life of trying to, to help them understand where they've been, where they are, and what's coming next. And so this evangelist, this truth teller, this good news teller in their life, uh, which probably represents a type of pastoral influence, is telling them that uh, they're going to need to be prepared because they're going to be tempted. They've gone through a lot of personal difficulty with uh, battling, going through the, the valley of the shadow of death and the valley of humiliation and, and all these kind of places, but now they're going to be faced uh, with a new trial that's not going to come from supernatural or emotional difficulty but from personal difficulty with other people. And all Christian and faithful are going to have to do is to try to pass through the area that they're going through and they're going to face an incredible amount of trial. I think the first thing we see in this chapter as they begin to go through Vanity Fair is that they don't have to be looking for a fight in order to get a fight that there are people who are going to notice the difference in, uh, I, I think it's neat how Bunyan talks about the, the words that they use and the way they talk, it was hard for people to even understand them, that there was just an incredible difference simply from them being believers in Jesus, people who had been rescued uh, by Jesus and the difference between them and everybody else who were just the average people in that place. And so you see that before long the snowball starts to roll down the hill and they find themselves in the middle of a, of a huge uh, outbreak and, and riot of what's taking place. It, it can't help but remind us of uh, scenes in the book of Acts. I think of Paul and Silas uh, in Philippi being put in jail and singing through the night after being beaten. Many of you know the story in the earthquake that uh, opens all the prison doors and, and then the jailer who comes to believe in Jesus through all that. And so you've got these instances where people simply being believers and, and sharing the gospel puts them at such odds with the people around them uh, because of reasons Bunyan mentions that they're worried about their uh, if, if things are sinful then that means that my living is going to be compromised, I can't do the same things anymore, or even just their misunderstanding or hatred of the gospel message. They, they just get really upset. 
And so Christian and faithful find themselves before long not only beaten by a mob but even thrown in prison and the fights that are breaking out are often have nothing to do with them or very little to do with them. One of the things I love is that in this scene uh, we also see that there are arguments that break out between people in Vanity Fair about whether or not it's right uh, that they're doing what they're doing to Christian and faithful. And I think that's wonderful. You know, the second thing I see, I, I think we see that's really important is that though the world is at odds with the message of Jesus, at the same time, even when it seems like everyone's against the faith or, or when any believer, if, if any of us walk through a scenario where it just feels like we're being persecuted, that God often uses that kind of persecution, uh, whether it's insults or whether it's things that are worse, to really move in other people's hearts. There'll, there will always be a crowd of people who want nothing to do with Jesus those of you who are evangelicals in the United States, which I'm sure is most if not all the people watching this, that we tend to have a, a feeling that if we can just say the right words and do the right things, that, that everyone uh, can come to faith in Christ. Now it is true that the gospel message is extended to all people, uh, but you can't help but read the Bible and see that there will always be people who no matter what is done and what is said and how it's said, that they're going to be opposed uh, to the gospel of Jesus. Now, that, does that mean we shouldn't try to reach everyone? Of course it doesn't. But it's just this reality that there's always going to be a crowd that will not accept Jesus. Uh, and what we see in that is, is the hope that's in that is even that crowd can drive others towards Jesus because of their dogmatic hatred uh, of, of Him. And so we see that in this, that even as Christian and faithful are getting beaten, there's a crowd of people who are going, well, well, we shouldn't be doing all this, and we'll find a character named Hopeful in the next chapter who comes to faith in Jesus and joins Christian on his journey because of the fact that uh, he was one of these folks who realized uh, these guys are right and I, sh I should be with them. God often uses tough things that we go through to be a great testimony in the midst of any faithfulness that we can have toward him uh, to, to be a testimony to others uh, to help to bring them to that truth. Christian and faithful are told from the beginning by evangelists that uh, one or both of them is not going to make it out alive. Once again, that's just the nature of Bunyan's day, that he lived in a day where it was very dangerous uh, to, to be a faithful uh, believer. England was in a le little easier spot than some areas of Europe, but, uh, but it still was a very dangerous thing to live for your faith, and so Bunyan just kind of brings out this reality for, that, that for their lives at the time. Uh, that, uh, that often it, it went with penalty of death. He mentions the influences of the Roman Catholic Church uh, that still held sway over much of Europe and even had some influence in England and even in the midst of those that weren't involved in that, that there's this attitude of uh, violence and death that came with convictions being different in faith. And so Bunyan mentions that and of course faithful uh, gives a faithful testimony and we see this great picture, uh, remind, can't help but remind us of Elijah's uh, exit from the earth that we see this uh, chariot that's waiting to take Faithful into the sky and to take him to the celestial city directly. And so Bunyan mentions just this reality that for someone who is martyred uh, that the advantage of that is that they're taken directly to the Father's side and they, their journey is done. And so uh, interestingly enough Bunyan says that both Faithful and Christian secretly desired to be the one to get to do that. And so Christian is uh, left after Faithful is, is uh, killed, after he's burned at the stake and, and tortured otherwise. And then uh, just in kind of a quick note at the end, it tells us that Jesus was still at work even in Christian's life and working things out, even the attitudes of the people of that town. And Christian is able to go free and continue his journey. And so I think in all of that we're reminded that to be believers who are walking through uh, life faithfully, we don't have to be people who are looking for a fight, and we really don't need to be people who are looking for a fight. But we do need to be people who stand on the principles of Jesus and that aren't ashamed of that. And, um, and that simply doing that is enough to make a sizable portion of the world hate us. I think that we see that more and more as time goes on, uh, that, that Christianity is less and less palatable to the world. And, and there's only, I think any Christian needs to be aware of that reality. And so this chapter kind of takes us through uh, the real struggle of being a Christian, but that we're called to endure and to keep going. 
and that we can understand that when we do, uh, that God is present with us and active in what's going on, even if it seems like the whole world's against us. Because often what we're not able to do in our gifts and abilities, uh, we'll see God do great things through our obedience, uh, even when we suffer and we, when we go through tough things. And there'll be uh, little hopefuls all around. In the next chapter, we'll see Him who, because of the faithfulness of people who went through things that were tough, uh, that their hearts got turned actually toward the gospel and not away from it. And God can do great things in that. Thank you for joining us. I'm hoping uh, to get to, to get a little bit more of a, of a better pace with these videos. I do apologize. And so uh, I hope to see you sooner rather than later for chapter 10. God bless you.